Hi everyone, my name is Zach and I'm the Bite Sized Engineer. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to pick a power supply for your project. Yes, I realize that's a lot of alliteration, but let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna cover the following topics. I'm gonna to start by talking about batteries. Then I'm gonna talk about AC power supplies, which includes breadboard power supplies. And then I'm gonna talk about voltage regulators. And finally, I'll finish the video by discussing which of these power supplies you should pick for your project. The most common type of batteries are alkaline batteries, and they come in different sizes like AA and AAA. Alkaline batteries are great if your project doesn't require more than six volts and it doesn't require a lot of power. The downside to these is that you can't charge them. If you wanna be able to charge your batteries, you'll need to get nickel metal hydride. These are usually marketed simply as rechargeable batteries and they have the same form factor as the alkaline. They usually come in AA and AAA sizes. For projects that need higher current discharge rates, lithium polymer and lithium ion cells are also a great choice. These are also rechargeable if you have the right equipment. The cool thing about batteries is that if you need more capacity or need more voltage, you can arrange them in either series or parallel. I won't go into too much detail here because there are two DigiKey videos that already explain this really well. But basically, all alkaline cells have a voltage of 1.5 volts, while nickel metal hydride have a voltage level of 1.2 volts. Meanwhile, lithium-based cells always have a voltage of 3.7 volts. These voltages are the nominal voltage. Of course, if the battery is fully charged, it will be a little bit higher than that, and when it's fully discharged, it'll be a little bit lower than that. If you need to increase the voltage of a cell, you can put two or more in series, and that will increase the voltage. When you put batteries in series like this, the capacity will stay the same, but the voltage of each cell will add up. So if you have two alkaline cells, for example, the voltages of each will add up to three volts. Or for example, if you have four alkaline cells, the voltage would add up to six volts. If you wanna increase the capacity of your battery pack, you need to consider putting the battery cells in parallel. In this case, when you put batteries in parallel, the voltage will stay the same, but the capacity will add up. So in theory, you could build a battery pack that has cells both in series and in parallel, and that would increase the voltage and the capacity. In addition to the capacity rating, a battery will typically have a charge and a discharge rating as well. The capacity rating is usually measured in MAH, which stands for milliamp hours. If a battery has a capacity of 100 milliamp hours and your project draws 10 milliamps, then your project can last up to 10 hours on that battery. There's an awesome battery life calculating tool on DigiKey's website, which I'll link to in the description. When selecting a battery for your project, it's really important to make sure that your project doesn't draw more current than the discharge rating of your battery. So for example, this is a three cell LiPo battery. There are three lithium polymer cells in there in series, so the voltage adds up to 11.1 .1 volts. Now this particular battery pack has a capacity of 5,200 milliamp hours and a discharge rating of 80 C. So that 80 C means that it is 80 times the capacity rating. That means that this battery can discharge at a rate of 80 times 5.2 amps. So that's 416 amps. If you ignore this rating and ask the battery to discharge at a higher rate, you run the risk of damaging the battery or causing excess heat or even a fire. The next option when it comes to powering your project is an AC power supply. These are sometimes called wall warts because they can be unsightly, but they are a great option for powering your project. We all have these lying around our house. This one I think I took from my old router, and then this is actually an old cell phone charger. These types of power supplies will have a voltage rating just like a battery, and they will also have a continuous current rating. This means that under normal conditions, when the supply is plugged into the wall, it will deliver a constant voltage of five volts or 12 volts or whatever it's rated for. When a load is connected to your power supply, in this case, your project, the load will dictate how much current it needs from the power supply. When you're choosing a power supply, be sure that the discharge rating is at least as high as the current consumption of your project. For example, this old cell phone charger is rated up to two amps at five volts. So that means I can use this to power any project that uses up to two amps. It doesn't matter if it uses less than two amps, it just can't use more than two amps. I tend to err on the safe side and will choose a power supply that is rated for about one and a half times the current needs of my project. So for example, if your project requires five volts and 500 milliamps, any power supply that's rated up to 750 milliamps will do. What about if you're prototyping your project on a breadboard? What's the best way to supply power? 
One option is to take like an old USB cable and strip the ends off and plug those into the power rails. My favorite option are these little breadboard power supplies. They plug right into the power rails of the breadboard. These breadboard power supplies can be powered by a USB cable or a barrel jack from a wall supply. This one in particular has a little jumper where you can select the output voltage between 5 volts and 3.3 volts. Another option is to use a benchtop power supply. These are great if you need a large amount of current or you need to adjust the voltage. These benchtop power supplies can even safely limit the current going into a project so you can protect your circuit against too much current if there is something wrong. Sometimes you might be working with components on a PCB. Circuit board components often need power supplies with tighter tolerances than the other options that I've discussed. A common type of PCB power supply is the linear regulator. These ICs are very easy to use and often just have three pins, ground, voltage in, and voltage out. Let's say you have a two cell lithium polymer battery with a voltage of 7.4 volts, but the humidity sensor you're using needs five volts. You can connect the 7.4 battery to ground and the input and you'll get five volts between ground and the output. The big downside to using linear voltage regulators is that they are very inefficient. The extra unused voltage has to pass through the internal resistance of the linear regulator. This is power that is being used to generate heat inside the regulator instead of being used to power something useful. This problem gets worse when the amount of voltage drop increases. Let's say for example you connected a 12 volt battery to the same regulator. That means that 7 of those volts are being wasted to generate heat. Unless your intention is to build a heater, this is not good. Alternatively, there are switch mode power supplies. These ICs use internal transistors and several external components including a diode, an inductor, and a capacitor. With this design, a switch mode power supply can create an output voltage very efficiently with very little wasted energy or heat. When a switch mode power supply is used to convert a higher voltage to a lower voltage, it's called a buck converter, while it's called a boost converter when the output voltage is higher than the input voltage. For example, I designed this board here that takes a 1.5 volt coin cell battery and boosts the voltage up to 5 volts using a switch mode power supply. So this would be considered a boost converter because the output voltage is higher than the input voltage. On the other hand, this little board can take an input voltage of like 12 volts, for example, and bring it down to 5 volts in a really efficient way. So this would be considered a buck converter. Which of these options you choose will depend on how and where you use this project. I know it seems obvious, but sometimes we overlook this important question. If your project needs to be mobile and cannot be tethered to a wall, you'll want to consider one of these battery options. If your project doesn't absolutely need to be mobile, then using an AC power source from the wall is the way to go. It often comes down to just having experience with each of these power supply options to know which one will best fit the needs of your project. So start building projects and try out these different options and you'll start learning the pros and cons to each one. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I would suggest starting by watching this video here on the DigiKey channel that describes how to connect batteries in series and parallel. When you're done with that, you can check out this video that describes what an amp hour is. That's all I have for this video. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.